Hi guys! Welcome to the next review video for your May 2019 IBESS exams. Remember your exams are Monday, May 20th and Tuesday, May 21st. So they're coming up a little bit less than a month from today. A lot of you are probably finishing school and getting ready to really start studying. So good luck. Um, someone had asked in the comments on the last video, Chimdima was actually, I think, how you pronounce the name of the person that asked. Chimdima, it looks like you live in Hong Kong, and that's one of my favorite cities. I used to live there. Um, you had asked to review topic 8, and specifically 8.1, about human population dynamics. So that is what we're going to go over today. And let's get started. So in topic, in section 8.1, about human population dynamics. I think the thing that a lot of people get confused about is this idea of calculating and explaining values for crude birth rate, crude death rate, and natural increase rate. They ask sometimes about total fertility rate and doubling time, but honestly, I think it's more important to focus on the other three, so that's what we're gonna do. And then analyzing age and sex pyramids and especially demographic transition models. We're gonna go over all of that stuff today. So let's look first at crude birth rate, crude death rate, and natural increase rate. The basics are pretty simple. Crude birth rate is a measure of the births in a population per 1,000 individuals in that population per year. Crude death rate is the same thing with deaths. Natural increase rate takes those two numbers and expresses them as a percentage increase. And so since these are per 1,000, you need to divide by 10 to get to your natural increase rate number. It sounds like a simple idea, but I think that it gets a little bit confused in its execution. So let's look at a quick example. Um, my example that I pretty much made up is about New York City, because that's where I'm from. And there are 8 million people, or there were 8 million people in New York City in 2015. That's pretty much true. These are the numbers that I totally don't think are true at all. I said that 60,000 people were born that year and 55,000 people died. And we're then going to calculate crude birth rate, crude death rate, and natural increase rate, given that information. So to calculate crude birth rate, you take the total number of people that were born, which you're given, and divide it by the total number of people in the population, which you're also given, and you end up with a number that is 0 0.0075. So that means that each person in that population of 8 million people is responsible for having 0 0.0075 of a baby. That's not that helpful because it doesn't allow you to compare that population of 8 million people with other populations of cities that might have much more or much less than 8 million people. So the next thing that you need to do is turn that number into a ratio, and that's where the idea of calculating the number of births per 1,000 individuals comes in. So you multiply this number by 1,000, and you end up with a crude birth rate of 7.5. So that means for each of the sets of thousands of people in that overall population of 8 million, each set of 1,000 is responsible for having 7.5 babies. And that makes that information a little bit more relatable to other cities. You could compare it to, say, Beijing is another city we're going to be looking at in this video, where they have uh, um, 21.5 million people. And you could figure out the amount of babies that each set of 1,000 people in that 21.5 million people is responsible for having in Beijing. And then those numbers have a little bit more in common. So you do the same thing with crude death rate. You have 55,000 over 8 million. Do all the same math. You end up with a crude death rate of 8.75, which I have rounded, excuse me, 6.875, which I have rounded to 6.9. Um, if you're confused about how I did that, take a minute to pause the video and go over those numbers. Otherwise, let's keep going and use those two pieces of information to calculate out the natural increase rate. So you take your crude birth rate number, subtract your crude death rate number, and divide by 10. Our crude birth rate was 7.5, our crude death rate was 6.9. When you divide those two numbers by 10, you get a natural increase rate of 0 0.06. So the population is increasing. That number is positive. The population is going up. Not by very much, but by a very little bit that year, the population did increase. And that makes sense when you look at the numbers because there were more people that were born than died in 2015 in New York City in this imaginary data set that I have created. So 
you can have a natural increase rate that's negative. And all that that means is the population is decreasing instead of increasing in size. That's fine. The thing that you can't have and that you should look out for if you're given a big table of data is a crude birth rate or a crude death rate that is negative because you can't have negative people in a population. We don't exist in a black hole. Um, so that's like a little bit of a way to just check your math. A lot of times you are given a big table full of information about births and deaths and population and asked to make some calculations. So we're going to do a practice problem like that with three, what I consider to be important modern cities, New York, London, Jakarta, and Beijing. I picked these cities because they're all different from each other, they're in different parts of the world, and they have different populations. The population numbers that I'm using here are true. Um, these are the estimated populations in these cities as of 2017 or 2018. Again, I totally made up the birth rate and the death rates just for the sake of getting to do some practice math. But there's one thing that I want you to notice before we start going over how to do the math. And if you look at these numbers, it should be relatively obvious. The deaths here are given per 100,000 people. The births are given per million people, and so is the overall population. So you can't start doing all this ratio math and having it make sense if you're working with different exponential values. The first thing that we need to do in this data set is normalize so that we're using the same exponent in all of these numbers. Hopefully you know how to do that. Um, to increase an exponent by one, you take the placeholder in this number and move it to the left because 18 times 10 to the fifth is the same thing as 1.8 times 10 to the sixth. I hope that that makes sense. I'll say it again. 18 times 10 to the fifth is the same thing as 1.8 times 10 to the sixth because in these exponents, all that you're doing is adding a zero. So if you add the extra zero up here, you can take it away down here. So in the next slide, I've corrected this data set. We have the same exponent in all of these sets of information, and we are ready to start doing some calculations. So crude birth rate. You are taking the number of births, dividing by the total population, and multiplying by 1,000. Take a minute to try to calculate those numbers on your own, and then when you are ready, we will go over the answers. So for New York City, the crude birth rate is 220.9 individuals are born for every 1,000 individuals in that population. For London, it's 197.5. For Jakarta, it's 322.9. And for Beijing, it is 446.5. So you can tell, since these numbers are all in a ratio related to each other, which of these populations is having the most births per 1,000 people. That is obviously Beijing. Um, but you can't tell so much about the overall population size without also knowing how many people are dying in each of these populations. So you should be able to do the same exact math for the crude death rate, take the deaths, divide by the population, and multiply by 1,000. Take a minute to do that, and then we will reveal the answers. So pause the video if you need to. When you're ready, check your work. In New York, the crude death rate is 209.3. In London, it is 222.2. .2. In Jakarta, it is 260.4. And in Beijing, it is 206.9. If you have any questions about how I got those numbers, pause the video and do the math. It is likely that you will have to do some calculations like this in one of your exams. So make sure that you feel comfortable with all of those numbers. Now that we have the crude birth rate and the crude death rate, we can look a little bit at what is happening to the actual overall population in all these cities. So if the death rate is higher than the birth rate, that means that the population is shrinking. And there's one city where that is happening in this data set. If you guessed London, you are correct. The death rate is higher than the birth rate, which means the natural increase rate will be negative. The rest of these cities, the natural increase rate should be positive and the overall population should be growing. 
So remember to calculate natural increase rate, you're taking birth rate, subtracting death rate, and then dividing by 10 to get that number as a percentage instead of a number per every thousand individuals in the population. Take a minute to try to do the calculations. When you're ready, check them here. For New York, you should have gotten 1.2. For London, you should have gotten negative 2.47. For Jakarta, you should have gotten 6.3. And for Beijing, you should have gotten 14.2. So now what we know, not only the overall births and deaths as an average ratio, but which city is growing the fastest. And that city is obviously Beijing. They're growing at a staggering rate of 14.2% per year, which is not true because, like I said, I made up these numbers. If Beijing was actually growing that fast, they would take over the whole world in the next decade. So... Um, you should understand how to do these calculations um, with real data, which will be given to you in your exam. And sometimes they will do out a whole row of calculations for you. So if you're given any information that you can check your own work against, you should do that. Like the first number you calculate for London, you should calculate for New York the same way and make sure that you're getting the same answers that they're getting. We talk about crude birth rate, crude death rate, and natural increase rate because it allows us to talk about demographic transition models. And that will be the last thing that we go over in this video. Um, you have probably seen images that look like either this or this or both. Um, these images are from Wikipedia in your environmental systems and societies textbook. So these two images are different ways of showing the demographic transition, how the number of people in a population is changing um, in a given city or country or whatever. So this is showing it on a graph. It's giving you the birth rate, the death rate, and the total population in a graph. Um, in this first section of the graph, you can see that both the birth rate and the death rate are very high, which keep the total population overall much lower than in other stages of demographic transition. In this next part of the graph, the birth rate stays high, but the death rate starts to fall. And that happens as societies are developing because they might have technology that allows them to have better medicine, they might have better shelter, they might have better water quality, and people start living longer lives. Um, so here, the overall population starts to grow. That continues to happen as societies get more and more advanced until eventually the growth levels off because the birth rate falls. And you can see that happening here. Um, and you can see the total population starting to level off up here. And why that happens is because in more and more advanced societies, you might have people that are working longer hours, opting not to have children, dealing with expensive lifestyles. So the birth rate is pretty low. The death rate stays low also. People are living long lives um, and not having as many children. That same information is displayed in this population pyramid. What's happening with high birth rates and high death rates is also happening here. In a population pyramid, there's usually one side for men and one side for women. Um, this side for men, you can see there's a lot of babies being born, but not a lot of them are living very long. This is like 15 years of age. This is probably 45 or 65 years of age. So there's a high possibility that people are going to die and not a lot of them are living to be old. The same thing is happening with women. As you get more and more developed as a society, that pyramid will start to round out. So you have most of the people that are being born living until old age on both sides of the pyramid. There's actually a stage that is reviewed in some of the SS textbooks that is missing here, and that's what we saw happening in the London graph, which is eventually the birth rate will be lower than the number of people that are in old age. So you'll have less people that are five years of age and younger than you have people that are 65 years of age and older. And that wreaks havoc on social services because a small base population is expected to support a growing older population. Um, but uh, the, that's a topic for another time. The question that you are likely to see about this, and my big fat head is blocking some of it, but which of the two countries is more developed in its demographic transition model? As you go across here, 
any of the population pyramids that are more rounded out are more developed, and any of the graph representations where birth rate or death rate is getting lower are more developed. So I hope that that helps clear up some confusions about 8.1. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. And for more review, if you want more information on this topic, check out my class on LearnSys.com. The link is in the bio. There are a ton of IB practice questions that I've come up with on my own that are unique from anything that you've probably seen in your textbooks or your practice tests that you've done before because I've made them up. Um, and if there are any other topics that you want to go over as you keep getting ready to study, please post those topics in the comments because I will definitely be looking at them as I'm thinking of more videos to make to help you guys review. Happy studying!